Hi, everybody, and welcome to Good Vibes FC. I'm Sam Lewis. I'm coming to you from the Women's Game World Headquarters in Vermont. And I'm Lynn Williams coming to you from New Jersey again. Lynn, I almost just called you New Jersey. Lynn Williams from New Jersey. You're 31 years no, old. I'm not from New Jersey. I'm living in New Jersey. <laughs> I am 31 years old. What the heck? Happy freaking birthday. I know we kind of talked about it last week, but how was the day? Thank you. Spent traveling. We flew to the Bay Area right. on my birthday. So as soccer as it gets. That is as soccer as it gets. I remember all my birthdays in college, we would travel because my birthday's in October and it was like right during the college season. And yeah. then I remember one time we like lost to Stanford and had to travel back and it was like so sad and the worst birthday ever. Okay, but one birthday we won the championship, so maybe oh you can God. just replace that memory with that one. I don't know why that other memory <laughs> is lodged in my brain. <laughs> I know. You would think that one would be way in the back and the other one would be in the front. But... I know. You're so right. In 2016, okay, on October girls. 9th, we freaking won the NWSL with the Western New York Flash, thanks to Lynn Williams' noggin. Yes, and some PKs. And Sabrina D'Angelo's <laughs> phalanges. Phalangelis. If you missed that, watch this on YouTube next time because we're putting our hands weird into the camera. Lynn, I also heard that you had a little bridal shower when you were in the Bay Area this weekend. I did. It was so fun and sweet and wholesome, kind of, as wholesome as it could get for a bridal shower. I had friends there, and we had margaritas, Ooh. and my grandma and my aunts and it was actually so sweet like every single person stood up at the table and said something that they like love about me and Marley and I thought that we just would take this time since you were supposed to be there that maybe you could say something nice that you love about me and Marley oh my gosh I would love that so much okay if I was at Lynn's bridal shower and I was gonna say what I loved about Lynn and Marley I feel like you guys are best friends you guys like love each other so much. You just want to be together. And you guys have honestly like been through so much adversity as a couple, meaning like done distance during COVID for so freaking long. And like, I feel like when people are about to get married and they have been through something hard like that, it's like such a good sign because you know, you'll go through more hard stuff at, during the rest of your life and in your marriage. And the fact that, you all have already dealt with that and understand like how to deal with it is just I feel so confident in you guys and how much you love each other and you're just like your friendship and your relationship and I just freaking love you guys and I want to get married with you <laughs> a throuple yeah well last week I think we said a quadruple a quadruple I think this is oh. getting weird again though <laughs> yeah it is thank you so much that was so sweet but yeah the bridal shower was so sweet and nice and I cried a lot like happy tears oh. enough about my bridal shower how was your weekend I had a lovely weekend Lynn I had some family in town we got to put our fire pit to good use and make s'mores the oh, first geez. s'mores of the year the official start of summer I'm so jealous. I'm so sad that you were not at my bridal shower, but I'm happy that you got to put your fire pit to good use and you were with family. Thank you. I really appreciate that. This place in Vermont that's like, I don't really know, I think it's local, makes these like special marshmallows. So we've been making s'mores with these like kind of like sick marshmallows that have like different flavors, like cinnamon sugar mm -hmm. and like et cetera, et cetera. And they're like, you know how s'mores are so good because it's like nostalgic Mm -hmm. And you want it to be like Hershey's chocolate and like the same brand of marshmallow and graham cracker. But yeah. these marshmallows are like elevating it. Like they're so good. Oh, this is like adult s'more. I mean, yeah, kind Gourmet. of. It's like kind of Gourmet. bougie s'more. Yeah. But I still use Hershey's chocolate, obviously. I'm not a monster. Do you watch Nara Smith on TikTok? No. Who's that? She's... We have to get into it. She's like this TikTok... She's a model, but she also makes food on TikTok and she like gets dressed up. But I think it originally started with her having eczema and she wanted to like eat clean. But then she'll be like, my kids wanted a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And then she'll start making the bread and then she'll make the peanut butter and she'll oh. make the jelly. And I think she's like leaned in because people are, have kind of yeah. made fun of her. So she'll now be like, my sister-in-law wanted gum. And so she'll make gum. 
<laughs> but I just like feel like she would make marshmallows. Yeah. Um, that would be fun. Yeah, let's try. Let's try. Let's make schmallows. I love that. Schmallows. We could brand them schmallows by Lynn and Sam. Okay, everybody listening, you didn't hear that. We're going to brand it. it. Did I just give it away? <laughs> Our million dollar idea? Okay, let's move on from the schmallows. Today on the podcast, we are going to catch you up on all of it, friendos. Barcelona's epic Champions League final win over Lyon. The NWSL went on international break with some major matches. We will catch you up on that. Plus, the U.S. Women's National Team just got to camp to square off for Emma Hayes' first two matches in charge. And as always, we will go to the inbox. We have an email from Alex to discuss who would be on our Women's National Team Survivor Tribe. Lynn, did you know that Survivor ended last week? I did. I don't want to give any spoilers away in case anybody's behind, but that's why we have the Survivor email this week. Before we get to Survivor, we're the self-anointed, something borrowed and something blue of women's soccer because it's freaking wedding season out here on the pitch, folks. It really is. Well, kind of. We're almost there, but it's we're in the thick of planning us wedding girls. Yes, you wedding girls are in the thick of planning. Let's get into the soccer. First things first, the Champions League final, which... Go with me on this for a second. But the Champions League final is like the wedding night. It's like huge stakes. It's filled with tension and drama and tears and joy. And no matter what, it's going to end up with people crying and dancing and drinking. So this past Saturday, the wedding night, 50,287 fans packed into a sold-out San Mamez Stadium in Bilbao, Spain, a new record attendance for the Women's Champions League final. Lindsay Horan's Lyon were winners of the French League and the Champions League most winningest side with an insane eight titles were squaring off against Barcelona, who this season dropped only two points in their entire domestic season in Spain's Liga F and had won two of the last three Champions Leagues themselves. It's a huge decision, Lynn. This is like band versus DJ. Lyon versus Barcelona. Yeah. Which one's better? Which one is better? What are you doing? Uh, a DJ. <laughs> exactly that kind of music as well yeah perfect <laughs> before we get into the match we need to set up the stakes here a little bit so let's talk about finals in general it's the night before it's the night before the wedding it's the rehearsal dinner if you will you're going into a final the next day is there any work left to be done for your team are you still watching film like What's it like to prepare and what are some things about finals that people might not necessarily think about? I don't think you're watching any film on, well, what I like to do is watch film on myself. So I don't think you're watching film on other people. You're just watching what you can do when you've watched yourself do something incredible. You're, you just like, are like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm really yeah. amazing. Like you hype yourself up. Have you ever done that? Highlight reels of yourself. Yes. Yeah. Have I ever done that? I like still do it. <laughs> I'm incredible. Something about finals that people don't think about. I think that, well, people know you're nervous. I think if you aren't nervous, there's something wrong a little bit. Like, I think a little bit of nerves are healthy. I'm going to throw that out there. Yeah. Even if you've had, like, the most experience in the world, I think a little bit of nerves are healthy. But no, the work is done. Like, you're not you're right. Not really learning anything new. You're just going in and saying, what do I know about myself? What do I know about them? And how do I just feel good? Like body feels good. Mind feels good. I know like when we would have NWSL finals, we would watch the Rocky movie or the that scene. Yep. Just get yourself hyped up. Get yourself hyped up. Play the Rocky soundtrack. I think like a wedding, like you said, Lynn, you have butterflies, but you've been like mm. waiting so long for this day. Everybody's telling you to just enjoy it. Yeah. But there is so much to think about. Like, you know, when people do before a big game are like, just have fun. And it's like, ah. I'll have fun when it's over. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> and then I think my other point here is, yes, you're nervous. And yes, the occasion feels really big, but you kind of want to create an atmosphere within your team that it feels like just another game mm -hmm. that like, the things you've done as a team to get to this point are why you're here. So you don't yeah. want to like change the game plan around or like do anything different or crazy. You want to do your same routine. You want to mm -hmm. try to approach the game with the same level of calmness and excitement that you normally would and just keep everything kind of consistent. I would agree with that too, because especially if you have a night game, you don't want to get yourself too hyped All up in the riled. morning. Yeah. yeah. And then you're like exhausted by the nighttime. Like yeah. <laughs> you just have to like, 
stay steady and say, okay, what do I know about night games or what do I know about a 4 p.m. game or what do I know about like whatever time the game yeah. is, you've had that experience before. So it's just about consistency. But I think that I just love watching Thumb of Myself. That sounds super, super conceited, but you just, you need a highlight reel of yourself to like yeah. hype yourself up and say, I'm really, really good, especially in those moments when you're really nervous and say, what do I know? I know that I know how to play soccer. Yeah. And I've been doing this forever. Does your highlight reel have a soundtrack, like a song behind it? There is one, but I don't know what it is. Somebody made it for me and I just... <laughs> oh, so they made one. Remember they made one for us, a highlight reel before the Olympics? Yeah. And you got to request the song that went behind it. That's the one I like <laughs> still have on my phone. I have Dreams and Nightmares by Meek Mill. <laughs> that, every time I hear that song, I think about you. I love that song so much. Remember when we were in Tulum and they played it? <laughs> And I was like, this is the most random song to be playing right now, but get up there, Sam. And you and me and Desi's boyfriend were like screaming at dancing. Yes. Yes. It was <laughs> the time of my life. We were in Tulum with a bunch of our friends and a bunch of girls from Kansas City. So Desi Scott's boyfriend was there. And we like all met up one night at this place. And we were like dancing and like drinking and singing <laughs> Dreams and Nightmares by Meek Mill. All right. We need to move on. The wedding <laughs> is underway. We're going to kick off. So... Basically, the music's playing. Somebody's walking grandma down the aisle. The game has started. And after a well-matched first half between... Uh, don't forget, guys. We're talking about Barcelona and Lyon here. We're, we got lost a little bit in the hype-up songs and grandma in the aisle, whatever. Barcelona, Lyon. A well-matched first half. Chances on both ends. There were some nervy stops and clearances. There were some close saves and shots missing just wide. It stayed even until the 63rd minute when Eitana Bonmati, who else, received the ball after some combination play and off-ball movement. She dribbled it almost all the way to the end line, and then she fired it at the keeper. It probably wouldn't have gone in if not for this slight deflection, but it found the back of the net, and it was one to nothing Barcelona. Now, if you're Lyon, there's 30 minutes left. A final, a Champions League final is on the line, and you're down by a goal. Do you put your head down, just keep chipping, or is it kind of time to, like, throw the baby out with the bathwater, abandon your game plan, and, like, speak now or forever hold your peace and, like, go for it? Yeah, I think that, like, that's whew, that's the tough part. <laughs> I, know. Huh? I know. Do you speak or do you just sit down? <laughs> As you continue to push, you, like, start leaving yourself vulnerable. And when you're right. just down 1-0, like, you're in the game still. But if you were to go down 2-0, then I think that, like, yeah. 30 minutes is too long. It's too long. You have time. You have so much time. So I would say like at this moment, you stick to your game plan, but you need to start like high pressing, being intentional about like getting the ball back as quick as possible. Yeah. How do you create chances? But yeah, no, stick to the game plan. Yeah, for sure. Well, Leon did their best. They tried to get one back. They had some chances, but they just couldn't find the net. 30 minutes became 20, then 10. And then we headed into just six minutes of stoppage time. And as those final moments were like ticking away, Barcelona found one last twist of the dagger. Alexia Pateas off the bench. Somebody ran right over and gave her the captain's armband, which I loved. She received a cross in the center of the box and she buried it home, pulling her shirt over her head. Brandy Chastain, Chloe Kelly style, celebrating an iconic 2 nothing victory in the dying minutes. Lynn, when you're sealing a game like this, that's you get that second goal right at the end and it's pretty inevitable now that Barcelona is going to win. Is it basically like the I now pronounce you moment? Like champions. <laughs> yes, I love that. What does that feel like? Well, I think for Barcelona as a whole, it's like, yes, we we have done it because it's obviously possible. But for six minutes and two goals, yeah, it slim chances. For Alexia, I think that in that moment, especially with the struggle that she's had this season of coming back from her injury, not playing as probably as many minutes as she would have liked. I think it's a a moment of like aha, but also kind of like fuck you, like like a yeah, that's like an f you goal. But it's probably like the best feeling in the world. Like just you just see red. You're like out of your mind, out of your body. You yeah. something you've only dream of. So I'm super excited for her. I know it was really cool. I actually Raj and I went live right after this game, and mm -hmm. I mentioned to him in that show, which is still available on our podcast feed and on our YouTube if you want a more in-depth breakdown of this game. But I feel like for Alexia, who she won the Blonde Dior back-to-back -back in 2021 and 2022, she had her injury, mm -hmm. and then she didn't probably play the role she would have liked to at the World Cup yeah. last year, but Spain wins anyway. 
her teammate on Spain and Barcelona, Etana Bomati, is now the one who's in all these conversations about the best player in the world, winning the Ballon d'Or, winning the Golden Ball at the World Cup. Like, And I think to have struggled with this injury and have struggled to find her way back and not been starting on and off, like it must be so frustrating and so difficult. And so just like you said, Lynn, like I don't know exactly who she's saying F you to, but kind of just like to the world and to her yeah, situation. Exactly. To sub in in the dying minutes and seal the win and score this incredible goal and have this moment of celebration to like look back on as I can go through all this shit and still step up at this moment. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was like you couldn't have written it better and I was so happy for her. Did you like see her celebration take the shirt off? Like, yeah. Can you imagine the feeling? Oh, yeah. I can, I can like almost feel the feeling for I- her. <laughs> It's, like, incredible. I always think that, like, people who can, like, take off their shirt that quickly, it's... They knew. Yeah. Well, I feel like she, like, knew she was going to score. She She was like, I'm scoring and I'm doing it. Exactly. She's like, I got six minutes and I'm going to show all of you guys. Yeah, I can, like, feel it for her. It's, like, the best feeling in the world. I'm so happy for her. It, It just shows that even though when you're having, like, a tough time, like, no matter how long the period of time is your moment is going to come and you just have to grab it and hold on to it. And I think she was probably like, I am the best in the world. I think that to be the best and to be at that level, you have to have unwavering confidence in yourself, even if the rest of the world doesn't. (laughs) And she probably was like, I am the best in the world and I'm going to show you guys in six minutes why I am. And that was like a sick goal too. I know. It was so sick. She like roofed it. Roofed it. I know. That was awesome. It was really, really fun to watch Barcelona celebrate. That's their back-to-back Champions League title, which is so incredible. I do feel for Lindsay Horan and Leon, who lost this game. That's our gal, Lindsay. But she had such a great season with Leon this year. Lindsay has been playing, like, out of her mind everywhere, getting so many minutes, logging so many miles. So we will talk more about her and the U.S. Women's National Team that's coming up in just a little bit. The NWSL is on international break. We are 11 matches into a 26-match season which wildly is almost halfway. Kind of can't believe it. That sounds crazy. Like, I can't believe we're, only on, we're already 11 matches in. I know. I feel like the season has been going on for seven years, but also two minutes seven at days. the same time. I know. I, like, couldn't agree more. Time flies yeah. when you're having fun, Lynn, but also drags. <laughs> Exactly what I always say. I I mean, you got to finish this. You got to finish the uh, saying. Last weekend, we had some serious tilts, starting with a red hot Orlando versus Becky Sauerbrunn's Portland Thorns. Orlando took 22 shots in this game. Lynn, that's a lot of chances. Two of those found the net. Both of them from who else but Barbara Banda. She now has eight goals in seven games and is tied with Sophia Smith for the Golden Boot Race this year. This is also a new record for Orlando. Eight games in a row. Eight wins in a row. Are they trying to be the 2019 Courage? With 22 shots and two goals? (laughs) First of all, that is like a crazy stat. 22 shots is a lot of shots. It's a lot of shots. But I have always said like it's better to be having chances than not having chances. So good for them. That's true. I like to think it's true. Again, Orlando, I just think that in... Can you, like, historically, just in my brain, like, my brain does not let me compute that they're doing this well. But here they are. Here they are. And everybody needs to watch out. Well, so, Lynn, like, what should somebody do? Like, how do you stop a team that can't be stopped? Does somebody just need to, like, park the bus and, like, kill Orlando's momentum and, like, make them tie zero to zero? Like, what? what's the answer? I think that, obviously, Barbara Banda is their go-to woman and making things happen and so I would say how do you not let her get the ball yeah so if you're gonna lose to Orlando it's gonna be because somebody else did something and not Barbara so how do you get pressure on the defense how do you get pressure on the midfield how do you like make sure you're starving Barbara of the ball is what my tactic would be yeah I I think that PSA to the rest of the league (laughs) Barbara Brandon can't get the ball She can't score. (laughs) Then she can't score. Maybe. (laughs) Orlando travel to San Diego next to take on the Wave and then to North Carolina to take on the Courage at the Wake Med Fortress. So that's two tough matchups on the road. 
that could put their streak in jeopardy if they take Lynn's advice and try not to let Barbara Banda get the ball. But Orlando is on an absolute tear. Washington Spirit beat the Seattle Reign 3-2. to two, And we have to talk about Croy Bethune again. Like, I feel like this mm-hmm. show should just be called Barbara Banda and Croy Bethune because, like, <laughs> it's just... It's, but it's like, how can we not talk about this? Croy Bethune is a rookie with eight assists and four goals in just 11 games. She's in U.S. Women's National Team camp as a training player this week, which is a huge opportunity for her. Lynn, can you just help us understand the difference between... There's a couple training players in camp yeah. versus all the players that are on the, the regular roster. Yeah, so training players mean that she will go and and the rest of the training players will go there and just train with the team until the friendly start. So I'm assuming they're going to leave on Friday or the the morning of the game on Saturday and go back home, but they'll get the opportunity to to sit in the meetings and train with the the team until the roster is set, which would be Saturday. That makes sense, Lynn. So along with Croy as training players are her spirit teammates, Andy Sullivan, Kate Weissner, and then Portland Thorns, Olivia Moultrie. They'll be in with the national team this week, and then we'll see what happens on Saturday and the other national team game is on Tuesday. Houston crushed the courage three to nothing. It was a really big game for Houston who got crushed by North Carolina in the opening match of this season, five to one. How the turn tables, Lynn? That's a little DJ pun, because don't forget we're at Lynn's wedding right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> I made a dad joke. Do you think the teams, like, clock payback? Like, do you think Houston was, like, freaking North Carolina, we've got to come out flying today? I think some teams, yes. I think with Houston's recent record, they probably were just like, we need to win. We need to yeah. like win big. I don't think it was North Carolina necessarily. It was any team in front of them. Yeah. But yeah, I think if you are like if you're Orlando right now and you lose to North Carolina next weekend and then you play them again, you're like, we're going to crush them. They ruined our streak. Yeah, true. So I, I would say it just depends on the team. For sure. Well, Lynn, Gotham is continuing their climb up the table. You were in the Bay Area oh, this are. past weekend, but you weren't able to play. How was your team's game from your perspective? I think it was awesome. Yeah, unfortunately, I wasn't able to play. I picked up a little calf injury, and I'm trying to be smart about it so I don't make it Good. worse. So nothing serious, just a little little tweak here and there. But I'm really happy with us. I think in the very beginning of the game, it was a bit shaky. I thought that they had a couple of good chances that were nerve-wracking. I thought Emily Sonnet had an amazing game. She's so annoying to play against as a defender. She just knows how to, like, bump the runner and just, like yeah. – get underneath you so you don't know even how to move so she i just wanted to have a shout out to her i thought she had an amazing game and then ella ella has been just incredible for us she like gets to training early every day and she leaves late and she puts on her headphones and she just is kind of in her own world but working on her skills and just dribbling around and so to see her have the success that she is having right now is just really cool to see so gotham's on the rise girls Beware of the bats. Gotham is on the rise. And Lynn, you were talking about Mm -hmm. Ella Stevens, who scored two goals in two minutes Mm -hmm. and Gotham won two to nothing against the Bay. It's a lot of twos. But the Bay Area (laughs) is kind of near where you're from. Much to everybody's Mm -hmm. surprise, Lynn, you are not from New Jersey, as somebody on this podcast accidentally said earlier in the show. You're from California. So what was it like having a game near home? kind of near home. It is the closest to my home, so I'm going to claim it. It's actually so funny, though, because me, Tierna... Crystal, Sonnet, and Rose were like passing in a circle and Crystal kept being like, Lynn, are you so excited to be home? But all these people. And I'm like, Crystal, I'm not from here, but Tierna is. So maybe you should like direct those questions to her. No, it was incredible because it's the closest place to home. All my family was there. My mom, her partner, my sister, her family, my aunts and uncles. And then I met so many people that were from Fresno that drove up. Oh, to support and watch the game. And I just felt so loved, but also devastated that I wasn't able to play that game. So come back next time, everybody. I'll be there. Yeah, that's really dark. And I have another really dark memory to just relate to you here right now. One time the national team had a game in like Hartford, Connecticut, which is like also the closest I ever played to Boston, which is where I'm from. And I like dressed, but like didn't go in. And it was, like, I wasn't, like, that young. Like, this was, like, recent, like, fairly recently. Like, probably, like, 2021, 2020. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly when it was. 
But I didn't go in and I went to go see my friends and family after the game. And my auntie Joni was there and she gave me this big hug and I just like started bawling because I was like, oh my God, like all my family came and I didn't play. I, it's, it's so sad. Isn't it so sad? Oh, it's so sad, Lynn. I'm sure that was like so bittersweet getting to like be there, but not getting to play. I know. I like called my dad and was like, just don't come. I'm like not playing. It was just like so sad. Oh, I'm so sorry. But no, it was it was awesome. I'm like happy I got to see everybody. And like I said, it, to meet so many people, they were like, I'm from Fresno, blah, 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 blah. That's awesome. It was really nice. Yeah. That's great. Well, congrats to Gotham. Very excited for you guys. Louisville and Kansas City both won their games one to nothing. So Louisville beat Chicago thanks to a brilliant strike from rookie emissaries. And Kansas City beat Utah. Kansas City set another NWSL record by having Elizabeth Ball become the 15th different player to score a goal for their team this season. That's incredible. And that's also like your significant other having 15 second cousins that they have to invite. And you're kind of like, why? The guest list is 9,000 people long at this point. <laughs> Literally, why? Literally, why? why? You don't even know him. Yes, yeah, so he's not coming. Utah is really struggling with just one win and one draw so far this season, leaving them stuck on four points and a minus 14 goal differential. We've mentioned a few times on this podcast how hard it is to be an expansion team, and they're trying to rely on team leaders like Kate Del Fava and Paige Monahan, plus recently traded Amandine Henri and rookie first overall draft pick Ali Sentnor from Hanson, Massachusetts. But first-year head coach Amy Rodriguez did say in a press conference last week that it was really hard, but that she's constantly impressed by her team's character and willingness to learn and move forward from all of these down moments. Lynn, when a team is in a slump like this, as A-Rod put it, what can they do to stay positive? Like, what does it feel like within the team when you just can't get that win? What do you think? I think it's really hard because I think that we as players – want to find an answer. And so sometimes I'm not saying this is happening in Utah, but sometimes in my experience, it looks like trying to figure out what's wrong. And that can lead to questioning of the system mm -hmm. or the coach or the players around you or the ownership or the yeah. something that's going on. Like, and so I think a sign of a really good team is when they don't look outside too far outside themselves. Obviously if there's a huge glaring issue that needs to be addressed, that's different. But I think a sign of like a good character within a team is when people take a lot of ownership upon themselves to make changes. And I think with a team like Utah, honestly, they are an expansion team. They don't have as much experience as some of these other clubs and teams that we're talking about. And the idea that their head coach is able to see them kind of responding to this adversity positively is a really good sign. And it's something that they can build on for years to come, even if this isn't the year that they're going to, like, win the Shield. I think mm -hmm. growing that good culture early on in a club is, like, really, really important. Yeah, I agree. I think that it's so hard, too, because as a competitor and a player, you want to be at the top at all times. I think it's just hard when you are the expansion team. And it's not like going as perfectly as you would expect. I think, like you said, it is very important to build that foundation. And then you can like have a strong foundation to build on top of instead of like yeah. a one-off year or whatever. Something that you said to me way back though, is when things aren't going well, I think it is important to get outside of just yourself though, mm. not outside of the team, but outside of yourself and to encourage your teammates and connect with your teammates on the field, but off the field as well. And I think yeah. that the moment that you stop just saying, oh, what can I do? What's, what is my doing wrong? What, 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 what? And you, you just- You like spiral in your own head. Exactly. If you can just connect with a teammate and say like, great job and like make eye contact. I think that is a huge thing that it like is so small, but goes a long yeah. way of you're doing fine. We're going to do it as a team. We're going to get there together. I think it's just super important. And, and it creates, like you said, this culture of vulnerability and mm -hmm. ability to, to say, okay, I put my hand up when I made that error, but like, how can we get better as a team instead of you did this or what am I not doing wrong? And what is the coach not yeah. doing right? And all of the things It kind of unifies you instead of separates you. So I hope that they 
get it together for like the sake of the league and just themselves, but as a competitor. Fair enough. Somebody's got to be in last. Go bats. <laughs> Somebody's got to be in last. <laughs> Would you wish, I wish personally, I'll speak yeah. for myself, I wish the best for Utah. I did really like hearing from Amy Rodriguez that the team is responding well. I think, especially for younger players, it can be really hard to come into this league and face mm -hmm. kind of loss after loss after loss. So I am sending them well wishes, but it is now time for the Olipop Gut Check of the Week brought to you by our best pals at Olipop. I have a little vintage cola going today. Ooh, I got a strawberry vanilla again. Strawnilla. And here's some ASMR. Ooh, I'll give you some ASMR too with my stub fingernails. <laughs> look at how, like, look at how we like, can't not, hear anything. Look at how not ASMR that is. Well, I don't need to look. I can hear nothing. That's my finger stubs up against the king. <laughs> like, go to the nail salon. Okay, cheers me. <laughs> One, two, three. Dink. <laughs> all right, now that our gut health is all back on track, we are on international break, so we thought we'd do an international-themed gut check. Our gut check, Lynn, which international NWSL player gets the Olipop Gut Check International Player of the International Break Award, a very prestigious honor similar to being maid of honor or matron Ooh, of honor? Or just the honor. Or, yeah, or per bridesmaid or of pers honor. Yes, precisely. Okay, I have some options here for you, Lynn. I'm going to yeah. read you some options of the top international players and some of their stats. Obviously, Barbara Banda, eight goals, two assists. I mean, do we even need to read the rest? We also have Tem Wachuinga from Kansas City, five goals, four assists. Ule Sar of the Washington Spirit, six goals, two assists. B is Anorado, Kansas City, four goals, three assists. And Katrin Berger, three clean sheets and an 88.5% save percentage. Then we have Angelina, defensive midfielder on Orlando with a goal and an assist, but really holding it down for that number one team. Claire Emsley of Angel City with five goals and two assists. And then Hina Sugita of the Portland Thorns with one goal and three assists, who's also holding down that midfield for Portland. I think Barbara Banda is an obvious choice here, but I'm going to also shout out Ule Sarlin. I think Ule Sar is in a really great run of form, performing consistently for the Washington Spirit, and has been really fun to watch. I would agree with Barbara Banda. I think that she is incredible. She's like a cheat code. But in a shocking turn of events, I'm also going to say Anne. Anne. <laughs> Anne. 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 Katrine Berger, who just got engaged. I know. So she's oh on this God. wedding trend as well. But not only is she our keeper here at Gotham, but also I do think that when... 90% of the time, I think that the goal scorers get a lot of credit. Yeah. I have been a beneficiary of that. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> You're not mad. <laughs> I'm not mad about it at all. But I think when you look at a game, and especially for us, has kept us in a game in a lot of instances so somebody else can shine and they don't always get the clout or the hype that they deserve, defenders and goalkeepers. So, Anne, this one's to you, girl. This Olipop gut check. Cheers to Anne. Cheers to Anne. Okay. Well, if you want more ASMR from me, or if you have ideas that we didn't name here or a very strong alternate opinion, let us know in the comments. Yeah. The U.S. Women's National Team have arrived to camp in Colorado before two friendly matchups with the Korea Republic. The first game is this Saturday, June 1st at 5 p.m. Eastern. And the second is Tuesday, June 4th in St. Paul at 8 p.m. Eastern. Okay, Lynn, so you're here. You didn't get called into camp. Can you just tell us a little bit about how you're feeling? Obviously, not incredible. I wish I was there. That's no surprise. Yeah, it sucks. I mean, not being called sucks. I have been in this position before, and I'm just hopeful. You know, like, I, there's nothing I can really do. I can't control who they pick or who they don't pick but I can control how I respond and I can control how I play and like how I walk and how I carry myself through life and day to day and on the field. And, and so in those moments and in these times, all I think is like, what can I do and what can I control? And that's hopefully playing good soccer, hopefully turning their head back towards me, 
getting up every day, putting in the work, being a good teammate, all of those things. And so that's where I am just putting my energy instead of just saying like, woe's me, I didn't get picked. Like that's not going to do me any favors. And so that's how I'm feeling and that's what I'm doing. Awesome. Well, thank you for talking about that. I'm sure that like isn't easy to discuss it publicly and we really appreciate it. You know how much I believe in you and I have a great feeling that you will be back in there. But in terms of the rest of the team, there are some interesting things to know. Number one, obviously, is that after months of interim manager Twilight Kilgore, new U.S. Women's National Team head coach Emma Hayes is stateside and is now overseeing her first few training sessions. Also, Rose Lavelle is back with the team after missing the She Believes tournament with an injury. Alyssa Nair is not in camp due to injury, so we'll be looking to see who fills in for her. I would guess Casey Murphy of the North Carolina Courage, which is a big step for her. We also saw some first-time call-ups for Chicago Red Stars defender Sam Staub and Washington Spirit midfielder Hal Hirschfeld. So that's really exciting time for them. Let's zoom out for a second, Lynn. Obviously, this is a big moment for the national team. You and I have both been in with the team when there's a new head coach coming into the national team. What do you think these players might be experiencing this week? I think that it's going to be like a bit of newness, just like getting to know Emma um, as a person, but also what is her coaching style like? What verbiage does she use? I'm going to just go out on a limb and say that I am assuming that it's not going to be all new information. Obviously, Twyla is not leaving the team. She's stepping down into a assistant coaching position. I'm also going to assume that they have been in conversation and in communication this whole time. So it's not going to be like so much new information, but there is going to be newness in in her style. And I think that that is the thing that I would assume that they are are learning and, and getting to know. It's just like, okay, how does she operate before going into this world event in the Olympics? What do you think? I totally agree. I think... In my experience, there's been an effort from the staff to not change everything all at once. Like I mm. noticed in the transition between Jill and Vlatko that there must have been some like passing off through staff members of how things mm -hmm. are generally run, like what meals look like and what yeah. film looks like and kind of like how you transition from a warm up to a drill. Like I think that obviously it's all soccer. So like it's not like it's going to be like something yeah. totally new. But I do think coaches have totally different like styles and preferences of the way the team is run off the field, including on mm -hmm. it. And I think there will be some effort to not make the players feel like, oh my God, this is like a totally different setup to what we've been doing for the last however many years they've been on the team. And I also think that there's probably like, it's a big adjustment for Emma too. I mean, She's coming into this group that all knows each other like really well. I mean, Emma probably knows some of her staff, but all the girls know each other. They know the equipment staff and the medical staff and the comm staff and the media like and Emma is kind of like the new kid. So I think that I imagine she's experiencing a lot of tons of information coming at her, tons of mm -hmm. things she wants to focus on. Obviously, she wants to pick an Olympics roster and evaluate these players but as just a human being coming into a totally new environment where the expectation is super high the standard has been like set way up here and the way things work has been established for a really long time that must be really overwhelming for her too so I hope everybody is like settling in okay I'm really looking forward to the games I think it's going to tell us a lot and be a really exciting moment for this team ahead of the Olympics so Definitely stay tuned to our feeds on social media for updates as these two matches go on. Next week, we will be back with an episode of Good Vibes with Becky to go over our takeaways from both of these upcoming games. Before we get to our inbox, we have some other international soccer news for you that we wanted to make sure you knew about. Ahead of this international window, multiple Argentine footballers have quit the Argentina national team, including goalkeeper Lorena Oliveros, defender Julieta Cruz, and midfielder Lorena Benitez, citing lack of pay for upcoming friendlies and conditions in camp. Lynn, obviously we've talked about issues between players and their federations before, and I think our overarching message is just that we want to support the players and hope that these national team federations can support their players adequately. It's so overdue, and it's such a shame to see it come to this with players quitting, so hopefully this can get resolved soon. It's just a shame. I think that Soccer is supposed to be this sport that is, like, so fun and so 
uniting and but it's short like careers are short in the long scheme of things and to have somebody take something away from you because the conditions are so terrible or or not up to standard and you feel like you have to go to the lanes of quitting in your short career it just it hurts my heart for them um i hopefully they get it all sorted out and they can be welcomed back but i just feel for them and obviously are in support of raising the standard yeah for sure i mean zooming way out brazil is getting the 2027 women's world cup and so I feel like Brazil and Colombia are some top South American teams. And historically, those federations have established a standard for their teams. But for a country like Argentina and for that federation to have this opportunity to have a World Cup in their region, I think it's an opportunity. They should try to establish and create a more positive relationship with their players so that they can use the buildup to a South American World Cup in their favor and use hopefully that tournament if they qualify as an opportunity to grow their federation and their program even more. I also wanted to share, this is much more positive news, Canada announced their professional domestic league. It's called the Northern Super League and it's going to start in April of 2025 with six teams. This is very cool for Canada. I'm kind of hoping we can build our own little Champions League over here in the CONCACAF region. That'd be incredible. Conca Champions League. Conca Champions. It's beautiful. It's so, so good. You guys know where to find us. If you need more help with your marketing or your naming, we're here. You can send us an email. Women's game MIB at menandblazers.com. Okay, let's go to that <laughs> same inbox. We got an email from Alex that asks, on previous episodes, you mentioned that you watched Survivor way back in high school. Me too. And just picked it up again now. Me too. Seriously so good. Why did I ever leave? Anyways, I don't know why any of us left, Alex. It's the best show on television. Anyways, my real question is, who would you want on your Survivor tribe from the U.S. Women's National Team? This could be any team, past or present. Do you go for the real superpowers to get yourself to the end? Who can you trust the most? Who can you trust the least? Who would you survive with? Lynn, what do you think? Okay. (laughs) I got a lot of takes here. First of all, I'm going to start with you. I feel like I'm going to take you but you will sabotage me at the end. Like you Whoa. Are, I've played mafia with you and I know you're so out for Lynn, yourself. So let me explain. First of all, Alex and Lynn, that's not how Survivor works. Lynn, oh, okay, if sorry. you and I get to the final three together, our jury, which is the other players that we have previously voted out, they will vote who wins. So I could get take you to the final three and then nobody ever has to sabotage anybody. Oh, you and okay. me so, can work together to the end. So, So the people that we vote out win, I mean, vote. Yes. Let me, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. The people that we vote out vote for us. Yeah. The jury would vote and pick the winner. So they would have to choose between us, but we could also like make a little alliance and be like, we're going to go split skis. Well, yeah, obviously, if you're not picking me, I'm going to quit the show. (laughs) So that's one. I'm taking you. (laughs) Okay, great. Who else are we taking along? You know, we got to take Rose and Sonnet, but I feel like they're going to have their own alliance and we can't have four in the final three. No, they're 100% throwing us under that bus. Yeah. So we need to come up with a strategy on how to stomp on them in the physical challenges. (laughs) Slur is broken up. (laughs) Slur Slur has become sl. Sl. (laughs) We are tribe sl. And they're er. Yeah. Okay. So who else? You want Kelly, but Kelly could win. So Kelly's also dangerous. Like, yeah. Like, I don't think I want her though. You might want to get her out first. Like, sorry, Kel, you're too good and too, gotta too go. smart. You got to go now. All the peasants are going to gang up against you. What about Christy? Oh, we're taking Christy. She's going to be the passenger for sure. She's just going to ride that wave. She's going to lay out all day and then like arrive at the top three. Like what? She's going to complain the whole time and be like, guys, why am I doing this? Why? And we're like, come on, Christy. (laughs) And then she's just going to be like, oh, okay. And then we're going to win. I mean, we can't all, I feel like you haven't ever watched Survivor. Like we can't all win. Okay. We're all going to be in the three. That's what I meant. (laughs) (laughs) We're all going to go to the end. But she also might, she's like a crowd favorite. So clearly we can't take her either. Christy's undecided. (laughs) 
But me and Lynn have a lot. We didn't even talk about Becky. <laughs> Becky's a great one, actually. Becky? Becky would be like surprising, I think. Because she's going to outwit, outlast, outplay us all. Yeah, Becky, like, Becky would be somebody who the whole time I'm agreeing with, I'm like, yeah, yeah, exactly, uh-huh. And then at the very end, I'm like, you conned me. Yeah, yeah, and she's going to be like, that's the game, Lynn. Yeah, that's but, like, I game. didn't notice, I didn't notice she conned me until it was too late. I know, I would keep, like, going to Becky for, like, all of my, like, tidbits of information, and then we'd get to the end, and people would be like, you didn't actually do anything the whole game, you just listened to the kingpin, Becky Sauerbrunn. Like, I yeah. know. I, this is how I feel about Becky when it comes to talking about like teams. Like she'll be like, "Oh, how are you guys doing?" And I'm like, "I can't tell you anything <laughs> about my team because I know that I'm gonna like maybe say something that you you're gonna latch on to." Yeah, that like is just like a friendly like, "Oh yeah, you know, my calf," and then she's gonna like take that back to Portland, and I'm gonna be like, "Becky, take it back to her own tribe." Exactly. So I, I can't. We can't take her. This is just a two-person team. It's, yeah, it's me and Lynn. Like, I don't really know what to tell anybody else. Everybody else scares us or is going to have too strong of an alliance with somebody else. Too good. We're threatened by all. We're We're threatened. We're just too threatened by them, but we just love each other so much. (laughs) Right? We are one. We are one. Just consider us one survivor player and we will get there together. Okay, Alex, freaking obviously love the question. We kept that one going for probably the longest we've ever kept an email going. I also need to tell everybody, we are heading to Kansas City. Raj and I will be at the Madrid Theater on th- Thursday. On Thursday. On Thursday. Does everybody know what a Thursday is? Thursday, June 6th, for our first ever Women's Game live show. We'll be joined by some very special guests, perhaps from the Kansas City Current. So if you're local, make sure you grab a ticket. I think there's just a few left. And if you are not local, fly on in or the show will be posted to our feed afterwards. Don't forget, you can write us with questions, survivor-themed only, at womensgamemib at menandblazers.com. Lynn, we're going to wrap this one up. We're going to let these poor people go, but we need to leave our beautiful listeners with a good vibe. Ooh, my good vibe. My gas was on empty, and I, naturally, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have 28 miles left and to get to training it's 24 miles so that's not going to work out you and i filled up scare me well so naturally i stopped and i filled up my gas tank and it just felt so good to know that i can get like a full gas tank i don't think there's a better feeling so i love a full gas tank sometimes i'll even fill it up when it's only halfway because i'm just like exactly hey that's what i'm saying so go fill up your gas tanks but also be conservative because the world if you have an electric car, go charge it. <laughs> go charge that thing up. Take the public transportation. Yes, that too. That too. We ride a bike. We, we get it. Good job, Lynn. You say transport it. yourself. Yeah. Somewhere. Walk. <laughs> um, my good vibe. Here's my good vibe. My back's been bothering me. You know me out here digging up fire pits, riding bicycles. It's not a good vibe at all. My back's been bothering me, and I did some stretching yesterday, and I got a back crack, and my back is feeling a lot better. That is a good one too. You got to stretch. Am I an elderly man? <laughs> you do got to stretch. Keep yourself feeling young. Another thing, speaking of yard work that you're doing. Tell me. <laughs> this is getting loose. But <clears throat> I think as as you get a house, it appears that as you get older as well, you just make up stuff to do around the house. Like my oh, dad yeah. is always like, I got to put in this patio. I got to rake like the, back the leaves. Looks- Exactly. Got to get a new trash can. Got to level the ground. And you're like, why? It like looks yeah. fine. But he said it's because as you get older, like doing stuff like that keeps you young. It keeps you going. So get out there and mow that lawn. It threw my back right out. Let me tell you. Live <laughs> with your legs. Okay. So that's it for this week's episode of Good Vibes FC. I really hope you're subscribed to this podcast feed. If not, subscribe right now, you king-sized Kit Kat bar. It's available wherever you listen to podcasts. And we are on YouTube and we are on Instagram at Women's Game MIB. You know where to find us at this point. Next week on Monday, we have an interview with a listener. It's literally just me picking her brain the whole time about how she is the best penalty kick taker, maker, saver, 
in the history of the whole world. So watch out for that on Monday. And then on Thursday, Becky and I will review both of the upcoming U.S. Women's National Team games. The schedule is a little bit different this week and next week. So just stay on your toes, people. You never know what's going to get thrown right at you. All right, everybody. Goodbye. I'm Lynn Williams. And I'm Sam Mewis. And this is Good Vibes FC, the podcast that's like the after party to the wedding. Because while it's a great freaking time, to be honest, it is just a little messy out here. And cheers to that. <laughs>